this is Goose. Uh, it's our little buddy. It's our home. Uh, he's a 1995 Toyota Land Cruiser. So we give you a little walkthrough of all things we've done to him. And it's sort of a constantly changing thing. It should be pretty close to how it's going to be for a while since we're heading out for a year to live in him. But back here, sort of the kitchen area is where we, we do most cooking. We just finished this little table, a simple little piece of stainless. Um, and then we dimple dyed it to add a little strength, remove a little bit of weight. And it's just uh, magnets up there holding it. So pretty strong and uh, we made it for the dimensions of our, our uh, stove. So you can simply set that on there and you're good to go. And then we've got the Lifesaver jerry can, which is the one that purifies like stream water and pond water and that type of thing. A fuel can in case we have to walk to get fuel. And then a water can that's five gallons with a spout on it. We've got a flexi tank, which I don't think they make anymore. They're out of Australia. And it's something like seven gallons. It doesn't really sit in here. It sits in this region here of the fender well that's kind of unused. Um, here we've got two deck plates that we just keep soft items in. Anything hard seems like it would bounce around and beat the heck out of the, uh, the sheet metal. So uh, on this side we've got uh, beach towels, a saw, coveralls, and the super siphon. And then on this side we have got a lot of recovery stuff. So a static strap, soft shackles, this is a lifting sling but I use it as a tree sling as well. And that's pretty much that. Uh, we just got this. We ran into someone the other day when we were working on the truck uh, from this company and they were heading to Baja uh, racing. And so uh, kind of a cool little thing. It's a solid chunk of stainless steel. It's got one of those nuts that once you screw it on, it snaps off so you can't remove it. Sort of a, a tamper-proof locking nut on there. And then once you put the key in here, this piece comes out and we have a, um, a thick, like a, like a bike lock, wire lock that goes through the wheel and back to this. And then we have another one we're going to put over here. We just got to figure out how to mount it. And I was looking for some way basically to protect these things off the back of the truck. I don't expect a ton of theft, but if you can just pick it up and walk away, it's so easy. Why wouldn't you? And I can't really replace this mid-trip. It's pretty expensive and it'd be hard to find cans that I like uh, in some random country. So we want to at least lock them if somebody wants to take them that bad and they, they get some bolt cutters, fine. Uh, we've got a 10 pound tank here and the 10 pound propane tank which goes right to the, uh, the stove up on top of it. It's not just held on by that rubber. I just do that for vibration. It's actually bolted to the bottom of that uh, tray right there. Uh, we've always had some sort of a trash carrier. I've had a trash ruse for, I don't know, 10 years or something like that. So I think we're going to keep that just because it's so big. It holds, for us, it ends up holding firewood. So when you're cruising along the road and you see some, we can ch chuck it in there. Um, let's go to the side of the truck here. This awning, we had, as you may have seen in previous videos, we had an Alu Cab Shadow awning, which is awesome. I think it's one of the best. But this is an old school Hannibal. And they still make them, I believe, just like this. But it's simply two arms come out, freestanding, no poles, just like the Alu Cab. But uh, it's a smaller surface area that it covers. But it also weighs about a third of what the Alu Cab weighs. So for us, the pop top came with this on it, so we just decided to leave it. It's really light. It's enough coverage for the two or even three or four of us. And so we didn't want to bolt the Alu Cab one on and find out that over time it may rip through the aluminum of the pop top. So we just left it. Uh, but this is this and the Alu Cab are the only two I really like, to be honest, of Onyx, because you don't need legs unless there's crazy wind. But if there's crazy wind, you can always do guide wires and kind of hold it down. Uh, on the pop top itself, it's aluminum, but we've covered it in steel. It. It's just a stainless steel spray paint. And we wanted something a little bit tougher than normal paint for this. I wasn't going to try and even powder coat the whole top. Once it was attached to the truck, it's permanently on the truck, so I didn't want to mess with that. Uh, but we wanted something fairly strong. So for the desert racing cars, we've been doing steel it on the suspension parts, and it seems to hold up. So we used it on the top. We'll see how it does. So far, it's been amazing, but. Uh, the reason we painted it and, and didn't leave it raw aluminum is so bright it would blind you, you know, several times throughout the day as sun would hit it, and it would get really hot. So we're hoping this cuts down on the glare and maybe a little bit of the heat. Uh, the gas struts we replaced one of them; the other one was okay, but we notice it's the little plastic end clips are what breaks. So we're going to take some with us. We sewed in, and I say we, I mean Kelsey, holding the camera right now. She sewed in brand new mosquito netting. All the mosquito netting had little rips and tears like happens on tents. So we researched the best mosquito netting we could 
and it's, it's a lot more rubbery material, so hopefully it doesn't dry out and rip like most of it. So we sewed that in, and then when we had the fire on the truck, which I will tell you about in a second, um, we had to sew in a new section because it's partial uh, section of the tent burnt. Uh, moving around over to the front, you can see the mounts and the way the awning is held on, but you can also see the roof of the Camp Tech. So on the roof we put on, uh, it's a silicone paint, roll-on silicone. It's for RVs and things like that. But we noticed the biggest difference in heat as soon as we did that. So we did put one inch insulation on the inside, like home insulation. We cut it, set it in there. But this seemed to make a bigger difference, oddly enough. Maybe just the aluminum being so reflective was capturing a lot of heat. But we rolled that on and that made a big difference. Uh, Milo, the previous owner of the Camp Tech, welded on these uh, airline tracks and with this stuff you can adjust those two crossbars you can lock in crossbars it's the same basic stuff as what's on the interior of our truck and you'll see that in a second uh, we've been through three hinges now so the hinge that milo put on um, he put on in mexico because the other one broke so he uh, found some stainless steel hinges that were pretty heavy duty um, but they didn't have, you know, continuous hinges laying around in Baja. So he put on external, like a stainless steel gate hinge. Some of those were starting to break and fall apart a little bit and we could have repaired them, but we figured we'd try something else. So I used a rubber hinge, which is what a lot of the German pop top companies use. As soon as we did that, there was so much movement in that rubber in the top. It probably would have been fine. They use it all the time, but I didn't like it. So we pulled that back out. <laughs> Spent another day putting in this. This is a stainless steel uh, heavy duty hinge. It was basically the beefiest one you could buy from McMaster car online. Uh, but hopefully it holds up. It seems really strong and it seems stronger than the original hinge that Camp Tex came with. So this is now the fourth hinge that's been on this particular pop top. So we hope it holds up. Uh, the way it's attached to the truck, which scares a lot of people, is right here you can see this is aluminum here and then this is Sikaflex. So Sikaflex is what's holding the whole thing on the top. It's what Milo used on his and never had any issues and he off-roaded to South America. So we're hoping it holds up, but essentially it bonds right to the metal. We scuffed up the metal, used a special primer, and now this is all essentially one piece of material. Um, so that was just one of these things where we tried to get it nice and smooth and make it look like it was one continuous change. Um, Moving around the truck, we've got the ham radio. This is a, uh, a dual band. I had a dual band and we just moved it uh, day before yesterday. We pulled out the old dual band and put in a new one so we can run APRS. If you're not sure what that is, go to APRS.fi. You can track our truck and us from that page. My old radio didn't have that ability, but the newer ones do. So we, we upgraded to a new radio and got a smaller antenna that's better able to hit trees and things like that. Um, so. Yeah, check us out. Uh, my screen name, or my call sign rather, is KE7VGO, and that's the one that we have the radio tied to. So if you go to APRS.FI and type in KE7VGO, you'll see where we're at, as long as the radio is able to hit something that's called, what's it called? Digipeter. Digipeter, and other things like that. Uh, sometimes trucks can even be a Digipeter and use your cell phone to upload it, but whatever the case, if we can reach one of these areas, it'll ping our exact location. Um, Let's see. I'll go ahead and get jumping in suspension while we're here. Um, you can somewhat see it here. I used to work for this company when they were called Donahoe Racing, and so I got a good discount, and I installed these overly fancy uh, 2.5 adjustable compression um, shocks with a remote reservoir. They're really nice. I'd absolutely recommend them. To be honest, though, I wouldn't stress on spending this kind of money unless you're getting a great discount or you just have money to blow. They're fantastic, but I've also ridden in trucks with Old Man Emu shocks. This this truck used to have Old Man Emu shocks. Uh, I've ridden in trucks with the 2.0 Icon, so the same great valving, just in a smaller shock with less volume, and they work great too. I did do the uh, Mark's four-wheel drive out of Australia, two-wheel drive conversion. I'm just running the AVM hubs. I've had no issues with them. I know a lot of guys like the Asians, and at some point, maybe I'll get those. Uh, but that's pretty much here. We did put on these little rally armor mud flaps. The OEM ones were a little bit bigger and chunkier, and at some point I had ripped them off from coming off of a rock. So I like that these still help keep things from flinging up on your truck, but they're a little bit more low prof profile, and, um, you know, it works. Suspension-wise, it's pretty stock. It's shocks. Uh, we have a sway bar in front, no sway bar in the rear. The reason I did it is I've tried it the other way. 
the front flexing looks cool and is nice but generally whenever I lose traction it's climbing something so I wanted the rear which is where the weight transfer is to be able to articulate and move through the obstacles but I did want to keep one of the sway bars we're pretty heavy at this point and so I wanted to make sure we had the ability to safely drive on road and, and make turns so we kept the front sway bar removed the rear we've got the old man emu I can't remember the number but it's the medium or something two inch lift in the front very minimal and in the rear it's the 864s which are the heavy duty ones we ran 863s until about two weeks ago and then with 40 something gallons of fuel 20 something gallons of water it's just too much so i'm going to keep those for when we get home but now we're running 864s in the rear and then these shocks all around that's it we did extend the brake lines so they don't bind up because these shocks have a little more travel but essentially everything else suspension wise is completely stuck um, we're running 315, 315, 75R16s, which is like a 35 inch tire. Uh, I love them. I wish that you could find skinnier tall tires, but in this wheel size and in brands that I know and like, uh, in a tread pattern too that we like, I can't find it. Super Swampers and things like that, I've seen it, but uh, it's a great tire. We love it. They're like big marshmallows when you air them down. Um, coming up here. I've had this little LED light bar, which is better than a cheap, cheap sort of non-name brand, but not as nice as like a Rigid or some of the big name brands you've seen, Vision X, whatever, Baja Designs. It's one that some guys were selling on I Hate Mud, and it's fully weather sealed, and it's been on there six years, something like that, about a year after I bought the truck, and it's great. It's more light than this slow truck could ever outrun, uh, so I don't ever foresee going bigger. Factor 55, Thimble and Fairlead. Uh, worn 9.5 XP winch again, you know a lot of this stuff I use I would say 90% I use at Overland Expos when we're in classes and Maybe 5% out here doing some sort of a demonstration for a video or something like that and then just occasionally uh, to, For recovery. It's nice to have when we have needed it and been in a pinch But you know for us, we're not doing a lot of rock crawling crawling and that type of stuff So it's a slee short bus bumper if you're wondering uh, it's one of the early ones. They've changed a tiny bit. This was one of like the first five, so I've noticed there's certain changes over the years. Um, and that is pretty much it for up here. Headlights and everything else are stock. Uh, I do have the, the LED bar wired into the high beam, so those come on with it. Uh, moving over here, we've got snorkel. It's one of the generic snorkels. You can find them on uh, Amazon for very cheap. Once I saw that a guy rolled his truck and it still held up and it was it was not damaged, I figured it's good enough. We didn't want to spend the money on Safari. And the main purpose for me of having this is not water fording, it's for this. This is a uh, Donaldson top spin heavy duty. And it's just like the normal top spin, but it's all metal construction instead of plastic. But when we had one of these on our last truck, we found that the air filter was just always clean. Days, weeks, months of off-roading and silt, whatever. I pull the air filter and it's spotless. So for me, Having this filter out the air before it gets into the engine is really the main purpose of this. Um, that's pretty much it. You'll notice I don't run rock sliders. We could, maybe we should, but we found that if one of us is out of the car spotting, we can usually just spot our way through things and uh, go nice and slowly. It might come back to bite me someday, but the rock sliders this truck had on it were metal techs and they felt like when I removed them, like I had removed a boat anchor from the truck. So for us, we just decided to go a little bit lighter and uh, get rid of them and just drive more carefully. Um, I did, just for our trip to Central and South America, add these WeatherTech guards. Um, I've never really understood the purpose of them until you're sitting in the rain for hours and hours all day and you want some airflow. So really the whole purpose for these is just to be able to crack your windows in the rain and have some airflow within the truck. Also, I have noticed that the wind noise within the truck has came down. That might be something to do with my window seals, but whatever the case, hopefully you can still hear me. Um, it has cut down on some of that noise. Um, coming around here, you'll notice this bungee cord up here. This is just something we noticed the newer Camp Techs had. Uh, Land Cruiser Phil, some of the guys who have this had this, and I thought it might be a good way to suck the material of the top in. So although Milo has sewn in some, you can see right here where it's pulling in, he's sewn in a couple eyelets that you can actually bungee cord together and those work really well. This was cheap and so easy to add, we went ahead and added it and hopefully it helps. Uh, one thing we did add after doing some off-roading are these hold down clamps. These are simply for uh, uh, Jeep JK's hood, so I know it's travesty having Jeep stuff on a Land Cruiser, but 
They work really well, and the reason I added them is we noticed off-roading, uh, we were in Death Valley, and I kept hearing a, a thudding noise every time I went over a bump. And every time I felt that thud, I started to put my hand up there and realized the whole top was just slightly moving. So the way it was held down before was by some ratchet strap uh, rope type things, but there must have been just enough stretch where then it worried me that over time the hinge could, could move and, and torque it, and eventually, just like a credit card, you could, you could snap it. So um, getting back to the fire I mentioned earlier. <laughs> So we were working on the truck, we had the tent in, we had put in all new mosquito netting, both sides and the back. We had sewn on this back flap that I'll show you in a second. And what we wanted to do was weld up the holes from the hinges up here. So uh, my buddy Brent, I don't know how to TIG weld and this is aluminum, so he was TIG welding on it. And uh, all of a sudden the, the insulation material, which is right about here running through the whole back, it was heating up from right here. It caught on fire and it's pretty plasticky. So as soon as it caught on fire, it was going and going good. So it, it started burning. It burnt the fabric all the way back to about the window. And then it started burning all the headliner in there as well. So thankfully I jumped in, was able to, I came in, I was outside painting something. So I ran in, started splashing water on it and we got it out. But uh, yeah, it was a bit of a bummer, but it happens. Um, getting back to more positive things. We replaced this seal too. It's just a simple bulb seal from McMaster car, but we noticed the other one had some wind noise coming into the roof. So we went ahead and did that to quiet it down. And that's pretty much it, I'm thinking, exterior wise. I uh, didn't mention what type of bumper we have. They're pretty common, but it's Camp Tech, or excuse me, uh, 4x4 Labs. Luke at 4x4 Labs is fantastic, and I've seen so many people modify them different ways. Ours is pretty much as it was, except for the propane tank, which I welded on, and that was just something for this big trip. We wanted to have a much greater volume of propane than just a one pound or a five pound tank. Um, that's pretty much it for the exterior. We'll go ahead and jump into the hood. All right, welcome to the engine bay of Goose. Um, if you see some of this, don't blame me. I actually, it did work to cut down. I read the previous owner's uh, write-up on this, but this is something the previous owner did to try and cut down on the intake temperatures. Uh, for us, the air is coming from outside now. That may cut down on it a bit. I haven't measured it to find out, but this is connected to the snorkel right here. Uh, here's a light that he actually had installed the wiring for this light, but the lights were old and not working. So we installed some of these brighter LED rock lights, uh, but it's a nice thing when you're working on the truck at night. Um, the washer bottle relocation kit, I think it's a sleeve part, but essentially the point is so you can have dual batteries. I've never liked dual batteries, well, I should say I've never needed them, and so I've always just had one big Group 31 battery with a low voltage disconnect. That's worked for me for more than a decade. So what I did is I put all the excess fluids that we wanted to carry with the truck in this tray, the big battery in that tray with a low voltage disconnect, and then if you use too much battery, it would cut it off, you hit the reset button, start the truck, and recharge it. For this big trip, we knew we were going to be using a lot of juice. We we're going to be staying in one place for a while. So I went ahead and broke down and did it. What we did is the C-Tech dual battery system, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, two, these are, God, what are they? They're both good batteries. They measure up in cold cranking amps and amp hours to the uh, Odyssey batteries. And the Odysseys have kind of been the more recent uh, fancy ones. When I noticed these, I think they're, again, an off-brand one but they're similar cold cranking amps, et cetera. I think they're called X2 Power. You can get them at a decent discount through Batteries Plus or something like that. We tried to keep it simple um, as far as a dual battery system goes. This, this uh, fuse block is basically everything that is an accessory on the truck is to this battery. This is the starting battery. So we kept this one nice and simple and then everything else comes off of this. I hate wiring. If you're an electrician, you'll know this is mediocre at best, um, but for me, it's pretty good. So come over here and I'll check check this out. Okay, this is the C-Tech dual battery system here. Pretty simple, which is why I like it. The other reason I liked it is because if we do solar, which we, we aren't currently planning on doing unless we find some inexpensive soft panels that are easy to pack away, uh, you can simply wire it right into this. There's no additional wiring. So I like that there's that option. Uh, so C-Tech, dual batteries, that's pretty much it for under here. We haven't really done any modifications. I don't want to modify the engine. I don't want a supercharger. I want it to be slow and reliable. And I don't know, after driving people's with the supercharger, it's still slow, just a little less slow. Um, so we wanted to keep the engine temps nice and low. I am going to put on a different fan that's got some additional blades on it. Um, I don't run hot now, so it's not really an issue. And that's pretty much it. You'll see over on this side, we do have the small compressor. 
And I, I have this this fuse block or this uh, whatever you call it here uh, to, to run if I needed to to air up tires, but this is really just for the lockers. Previous owner wired all this in. I've left it as is, just rewired the wires and put in fresh tubing. Otherwise, it's exactly as you put it. Uh, we've got extended diff breathers here um, and for the rear and for the center. So this one runs to here, the center and the rear run up to the gas door. I think that's it for under here. Okay, next up, uh, our auxiliary fuel tank. This was an exciting one. I've always wanted to have that ability to go further. I think range anxiety is kind of a, a thing when you're out in the middle of nowhere. So what we have here from a buddy in Australia, he sent us over a dual filler neck. So dual filler neck simply means that when you pull out on this, there's a little flapper valve in there and it's filling the rear tank. And when you push it in, it's filling the main tank. So it's very simplistic. We didn't use an OEM auxiliary tank because those are 10, 13, whatever gallons. We wanted a little bit more. So we just built a rectangle um, and tucked it under where the spare tire would go. And we get just over 18 and a half gallons out of it. So it's pretty good. It's not wired into the main gauge or anything like that. There's just this transfer switch right here. And the keys need to be in for it to light up, but the switch will light up and now you're transferring fuel. What you're doing is pulling fuel from the auxiliary tank and pumping it into the main uh, filler neck right here. So instead of it going down here, you're just putting it into the main tank in a little brass tap that we tapped into it. So simply you're refilling your tank out of it. Uh, what we generally do is continue using it and as soon as the transfer pump is pulling air, it's really loud and you, you know to shut it off, but it's nice to have all that extra fuel. Uh, one last thing back here, this is kind of our rear electronics. So we have um, the dual batteries up under the hood. We've got some interior lights and things like that. We've got a few different communications devices, which I'll go over in a second up front. But for the back of the truck, this is where all the electronics live. We've got the two piston ARB compressor in here. And then we've got a little voltage meter, simple cheap one off of Amazon, 12 volt and a couple USB plugins. Once you look in here, we've got the we've got the uh, inverter, and then all of the hose wiring. Got the air down kit. Everything tire related and electronics is all in here. There's a fuse block, just like there is up under the hood, back behind here that that has fuses for everything. And we just tried to keep it simple. It's a lot of wiring for for what I like, but uh, it's everything we need. Okay. Um, most recently, we just did these air, airplane tracks here, if you can see those. And so we have, we've got some smaller bags that go on the top row, but this gave us so much extra storage space. All this is packed with tools and recovery gear in this first one. And so we've got tool bags, soft goods, all the way to the front. We've got our uh, safety jack, which is that bottle jack, uh, which we'll do a separate video on if you haven't seen it. But that's up under here. Uh, all sorts of fluids, everything else you could imagine. Um, so that takes up so much space, basically from here to the front of this, that we need room for things like clothing and food and paper towels and toilet paper, all that sort of soft goods. So these bags for us hanging are a huge increase in space. Um, why don't we go through the electronics up in the driving area and then Kelsey can show you our kitchen back here. So uh, up here we've got a scan gauge uh, this is an obd2 but it's kind of an early one so you can't see transmission temps but you can see a whole lot of data from right here it's nice to have uh, on this side you've got your sub tank which we showed you a second ago we have our arb lockers wired into a factory oem switch which is kind of nice um, in the center here we've got the little fridge monitor it's actually nice to have it's not one of those things i thought i'd buy but it came with the fridge uh, that we bought used so it's nice to be able to see it and just make sure is the fridge on is it getting cool or is there some issue you want to know if all your food's going bad so we've kind of grown to like it um, this is where spot has always sat but we're sort of replacing spot now with the with the, uh, the well it's not delorme i guess anymore it's garmin so replacing it with the garmin inreach uh, this can just do so much more with the two-way messaging and the coverage area is good all the way to south america where we hope to eventually get so um, this we're going to probably end up mounting right about here this is the new ham radio it's a Yesu FTM 400 um, and it's able to do so right now what you're seeing it doing go ahead and zoom in on this uh, it just found somebody so it's telling us it's pinged off of somebody 
and a lot of these times they'll give you a lot more info on these lines saying what their name is, what what channel they monitor. When ours pings, it'll go ahead and say we're monitoring you know 146, 460 or whatever we're monitoring at the time. So it'll keep constantly coming through with weather channels, etc. So that's why we did this one. Um, otherwise, in here, we keep our micro start in here, our winch controller we keep in here after learning a tough lesson. We used to keep this in one of the uh, rear hatches in the tailgate until we were stuck in the middle of nowhere with the truck sort of sitting on its ass end and we couldn't get to the tailgate. And then we decided maybe we'll keep it up here. Uh, the wires going through this are kind of the front section of the Tuffy box and in here we just have uh, two 12 volt outlets and two USB outlets and that sort of powers all of our personal items up here. And that's about it. We did put in, you know, a Sirius XM satellite radio, which will work, I think, as far south as southern Mexico, and then we'll probably no longer use it. Um, these things, I guess, are nice to have, but they're pretty worthless. I wouldn't put drinks in here and have it above all the electronics. Uh, but, hey, we got it. We need it. And that pretty much does it. We do have a dash cam. Um, there's just been too many bad instances where something has happened or you see something happen and you want that proof. So I think when we're traveling in other countries, it'll be nice to have. There's also a rear facing camera that, that looks at you and you can turn it. So if you get pulled over, you can point it at the uh, police officer or whatever. So it's not bad to have. Uh, and that I think for up here is just about it. So this is our kitchen area, basically where we do all of our cooking. Uh, we made this little platform, I think Tim just showed it to you, but a little table. Um, and so we put our stove on it so you can see what it looks like. <laughs> so that's where we end up cooking, and the propane again is right down here, so it just runs to the stove there. Um, we have the storage in back here. Again, just small light things to be kept back there. And then inside we have a little cutting board that just hangs here. A hot pad for cooking. Clean up is handy with a little broom and then this is uh, where we get our water kind of our sink and beer can opener and then coming inside so this is our living area now this is our house and we can stand up in here even so it's really nice and uh, this is where we keep like all of our food stuff because it's easy access from the back where we do most of our cooking so these drawers just slide out and our pots and pans and food and utensils and everything is in here. Uh, same with this, this drawer is another drawer with cooking stuff and spices and all of that. And we put stickers on them so if you want to send us stickers you can't because we don't have an address. <laughs> and then back here is where we keep our clothes. So both Tim and I, all of our clothes are in here. Not much space, but it actually works pretty well. And then uh, camera gear and miscellaneous stuff kind of just sits down here. There's no drawer in this one, so it's just uh, stacked up in there. And then we have this little table that can slide around and move all over the place so we can have that as work area or really whatever we need. So that's nice. We have our paper towels, another little airplane rack for hanging whatever we need there, um, a little grate for when we cook over the fire, the fridge, underneath the fridge, our stove just uh, tucks right under here. I made this just out of a yoga mat just so we have some something that we can take out of here and shake off um, so that we can hopefully keep it cleaner easier. And then we have extra storage back here. We do like a lot of bulk storage, so toilet paper, extra toilet paper, extra paper towels, any sort of light but big stuff we'll keep in there. Um, we have a little place for sunscreen. This is where we keep like all of our sunscreen, easy access there. Our shoes sit here. At both doors we have these little just car mats so we can throw them on the ground and uh, kind of keep our shoes there and have a place to step out of the vehicle. Uh, whenever we do. Uh, we sleep up here and we uh, will show you some video of what that kind of looks like with that. Um, we can open this back window up and kind of see out the back as well from up there. Hi guys! How's it going? That is our walkthrough of Goose. Things have changed, little things have changed in Goose as we kind of figure out 
where stuff fits and what we need and what we don't need. But uh, as you might have noticed, our location is a little different than it was just a second ago. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thanks for coming along with us and all the sort of preparation and building up of the truck and all that sort of stuff. Uh, as you can tell, we're now on the trip. So from here on out, it should be, uh, should be pretty exciting. Yeah, it's a little more interesting than building a truck, I think. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're excited to share where we've been with you. Uh, that will be our next episode. So we'll see where we get Wi-Fi <laughs> so that we can upload it. But we'll try to get that online as soon as we can. Well, thanks for coming along. See you later. <laughs> and hats. And hats. <laughs> what about hats? This is too long. I wanted it to be shorter. <laughs> Hi, um, Pat. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Um, uh, as always, thanks for coming along. Um, please, if you like our videos, like them and share them with your friends. That's probably the best way to uh, help us out and uh, help us earn some more uh, taco and beer money as we uh, move along. Yeah, and uh, we do have stickers for sale. It might take us a week to uh, see that you purchased one because we don't have Wi-Fi very often, but uh, if you do, we'll get those out to you. Yeah, I think that's it. We have a Patreon page. If you uh, feel like doing that, awesome. Don't feel obligated. If you're saving up for your trip or something, uh, keep saving for it and uh, make it happen. Thanks.